channel, Princess Living Free. Um, as you saw, I put out a little uh, short the other day where I said that we're going to be talking about some hot topic issues um, pertaining to Ethiopia and the diaspora. And as you can see, I brought my husband along with me <laughs> because I just feel like, um, you know, as a black American and him being Ethiopian American, I think that um, it's important to have both perspectives for this discussion. You agree? That's very true. Yeah. I Are agree. you ready to have like a difficult conversation? All right, let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So, I mean, as you already know, like me and of course my husband, like we both love Ethiopia very much. Like my experience with Ethiopia goes back to 2011 when I was there as a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer. Um, and I lived there for two years from 2011 to 2013. And obviously that's where I met my husband. And, um, you know, we came back here to the United States to start our life. You know, if you're new to the channel, check out our previous videos. You can hear the whole background story. But um, so, yeah, so I have a very deep love for Ethiopia and its people. And I definitely am no stranger to the culture, to the land, um, all of it. You know, it's it's very familiar to me. And obviously him being... I was, of course, I'm Ethiopian, born and raised right. in Ethiopia. So... Of course, I love I love my country. Of course, and I love my people. So you know, we want to just first state that before we get into anything, because I don't want there to be any misunderstanding about how we feel about Ethiopia. Um, and then the same goes for the Black American community. As a Black American, I am very proud of you know where I come from. I'm proud of our history, our culture, our people. You know the things that we have been able to achieve in the last you know 400 years plus. So. Um, you know, definitely want to say that. I know my yeah. husband feels the same. Absolutely. Very true. So um, we're just going to go ahead and just jump into it. And we're going to break it up into two different segments. So the first is going to be, you know, the safety and political concerns in Ethiopia. And so as you know, if you've been watching the channel, we just got back from Ethiopia and we had an amazing time. We did pretty much everything there is to do in Addis and even ventured outside of Addis. But in one of my first videos that I put out, we went to the Red Terror Museum and somebody commented, you know, something to the effect of like, why would you show this as the first, you know, video in, in the series of your trip to Ethiopia? And my response to them was, you know, um, I think it's important for us to remember history in order to learn from it and not repeat the same mistakes. You know, do you agree? Yeah, that's very true. I mean, history, you it's important to know, so you will learn from it. Um, if it's a good, and then you will um, repeat. If it's a bad, and, and then you will move on. So right. it's something that's very important to learn and exactly. to know as well. Right. So, you know, I think what, you know, the under understanding that I have come to, you know, being, through all the you know political stuff that we've been through recently in the U.S., um, I think what I've under become to understand is that politics and government is not the solution. You know, it's it's part of the problem, and you know because we ha live under governments, you know, in these various countries that we live in, they are a means to an end, but they are not the solution. You know, and I think you know what you even see in the Red Terror Museum and what you see today. In Ethiopia and what you see in the US is a struggle you know with the government and with the the powers that be you know um, because we fight for what we believe in you know yeah people fight for what they believe is right and against what they think is wrong and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing but I think you know as a people and I'm talking about collectively African people you know, we should be moving beyond that, recognizing that government, like I said, is is not the solution. It's part of the problem and it's a means to the to an end. So, you know, sometimes like we have to play the government game, right? Right. To get the things that we want to get. Right. You know, but yeah. there's a saying in the US that's like be the change that you want to see. You right. know, change happens from the people. Right. You know, no matter what government is in place and what government is doing, like right. The change is the people. Yeah. And if we change our mindset and the way that we see things and we see that we are the opportunity, you know, we are the growth, we are 
we are the country. Countries are made up of people. Right. Like, we'll stop looking to the government to solve all of our problems. You know what I mean? That's very true. You know, um, I, I totally agree with that. You know, uh, most of the time we, we focus on government. You know, government, this, if this government, particular government become in power, our life will change. Right. Um, because of this, all things happening in the country because of this government. So if we just focusing only on the government because things are gonna be good or bad, that's the thing is really wrong. Mm -hmm. Because the government also works for itself. Mm -hmm. More than, it's supposed to work for people, especially in, in, in Africa in general, particularly in Ethiopia. The government wanna stay in power. Mm -hmm. So the best way they can stay in power for a long period of time by working for itself. That means by causing divisions uh, mm -hmm. in the country, by, you know, play, playing dirty mm -hmm. politics you and know? playing one side against the other correct side. Yeah. so now my my brother and sister from the northern side they're gonna fight with the southern and the one in eastern fight with the western so we we fight there's so much division in the country and instead of fighting the government and, and bring the change we fight each other the more division between us the longer government stays in power right. that's how the politics works right and i've seen people say like you know, one in Ethiopia and in America too. Like once this government is is out, then we have an opportunity with a new government. You know, like everybody thinks that the government is going to solve something, but like right. no. You know, as my husband was saying, if we unite as a people and stop looking at our brothers and sisters as the enemy, you know, we'll be able to accomplish so much more. And you know, he brought up a really good point that you know, power is corrupting. You know, there's a saying in the U.S. that um, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely, mm. you know? And so right, right. I think it, not just Ethiopia, I think probably every government in yeah. the world has That's some true. level of corruption. In my personal opinion, I think, you know, the Western countries have just as much, if not more corruption in their government as African nations do, except ours, you know, is more hidden. They hide it a little bit better. It's not like in your face. Um, so, I understand that struggle and the desire to see change, but let's focus on like being changed. You right, know? right, right. I agree. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. with the moving on a little bit to the safety concerns. Um, so when we were in Ethiopia, like we felt completely safe. You know, we stayed mostly inside of Addis and only traveled out one time to Bishoptu. We went to Koriftu um, Resort. But while we were in, in Addis, we were at Intoto Park, we were at Unity Park, Friendship Park, like the space or science museum, like everywhere. We were throughout the city, you know, yeah. and for the most part, it's safe. Now, there are some like checkpoints and stuff like in the evenings into the nighttime as the government is trying to control the safety and security of the city and the surrounding areas, you know. Um, but I would say like, I think that you know, Ethiopia has been relatively um, a safe and peaceful country. It has a history of being a safe and peaceful country. And so now as things are becoming a little bit more tense, like there are, you know, riots and demonstrations and things like that. That's something that, that we're very used to in the United States, unfortunately. It's like something that happens a lot. People demonstrate, they riot. And if you avoid those areas, like, and don't be a part of it, right. it's not really going to affect you, you know? Um, and I, I think that, you know, this that kind of stuff happens in the European countries as well. And, you know, while there are um, casualties and loss of life, you know, in these yeah. situations, mm -hmm. um, I think that avoiding them is possible yeah. in Ethiopia. Whereas like in the US, the gun violence is out of control and can just pop off at any place, any point in time. You know, um, we don't live in a neighborhood that is would be considered like dangerous. Um, but there was somebody who got shot in a in a Walmart parking lot. You know, like over a parking lot, a parking lot over a parking spot. <laughs> yeah, you know, spot, like yeah. they were arguing about the parking space and somebody shot the other person in the leg. Like at our local Walmart, we don't yeah. live like in a in a hood or like you know, like I said, what would be considered a dangerous, a dangerous part of town at all. So, you know, and these things are unfortunately becoming more and more common in the U.S. And I think that, you know, that is not something that you necessarily have to be afraid of in Ethiopia. You know, yeah. that's that's very true. Um, 
you know, for for those who might say, oh, you, you got to stay in Addis, and that's why maybe it's more safe if you go outside of Addis, um, it's more bad. You know, before we actually went to Ethiopia, um, I do I do watch and on YouTube, and I do listen to some uh, local news, uh, Ethiopian local news on YouTube as well. And, uh, you know, most of them are really um, spread fears. Mm. Like, I think the reason they do that is because a lot of they have audience that they listen to them. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of likes and views that they listen. So the more negative they put out there, the more fear they put out there, um, and the more people watch them. Unfortunately, it's true. Yeah. Um, and they will get the views, so they continue doing that. So we, you know, I've been watching. So we watched, and I, I heard everything they say. We went to when we went to Ethiopia. Um, everything is really fine. Yes, as my wife mentioned, there's the checkpoints. They they stop you sometimes if they want to. There are my brothers who came from um, rural area from Borna region uh, from Oromia. There is a family members from from um, eastern part of Ethiopia as well, and the people travel. Yeah. I, you know. Yes, I heard here and there they they stop people and they um they, you know they, they stop you if you are like diaspora and if you if you know you're rich and stuff like that there's some like um what's those people called like mafias maybe on the, on the street like vigilantes like vigilantes and... um they stop you on the street and they ask you for money they, those things actually happened um i, I heard um so not but, to us not to us but it happened to other people that's what we heard right but overall and saying Ethiopia is just on fire, right. and this you know putting the U the videos on YouTube and what we what we saw on YouTube and what we actually observed and what when we was there is not the same. Right. It's not fair to the country uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, right. yeah, I, just I think a lot that. of people are over um, sensationalizing is that a word um, like just like you know fear mongering. Yeah, uh, it's fear mongering yeah. and um, it's just sensationalism you know right. and and i'm not saying at all that there aren't dangerous parts of ethiopia you know that you should probably avoid but people are making it sound like ethiopia is a war-torn country you know yeah. that it is a war zone you really, know we really felt like that we were like in afghanistan the way like right. it was in iraq that is how people some, make it some media and some people are presenting ethiopia which is not true the south part the very south part is some of those people who actually doing that are Ethiopians. Uh, the, the reason behind, I really do believe the reason behind there are certain group of people, the Ethiopians born and raised in Ethiopia and lived outside of Ethiopia, who doesn't like the government. So those people are who believe the government is the change. It doesn't matter if the government from the south, if the government from the north, or the, from the east and west, government usually works, it, it doesn't matter because we, have, we had a government from kind of everywhere. Yeah. But it's the same. So for those people who think because of this government, if this is happening, it's not true because we had the same problem in the past as well. Because mm -hmm. I'm speaking from as, as Ethiopian. Right. Um, so our, our, our goal will be, you know, be the change that we, wanna, we want to be, right? Right, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and as my husband mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, there are people who are exploiting the situation for their own personal gain. Yes. And they're doing it for, for likes and for subscriptions and for all this all these reasons. Like, yeah. there are even foreigners, you know, who come into Ethiopia um, to show you Ethiopia and show you their time and their experience, not necessarily, not necessarily to be helpful or for fear-mongering, but yeah. just because Ethiopians are so supportive of them, yeah. you know, of their yeah. channel. So yeah. they keep coming back yeah. just to get, you know, their channel to grow. Um, and if they're there and they're safe and, you know, it's like they don't have the fear. But every time, like, I feel like I post something on, on my channel positive about Ethiopia, somebody, and it's primarily an Ethiopian, will come and say something negative about the country, you know, right. and try to breed negativity and fear, even though I'm trying to bring positivity and show um the progress that's right. happening and the development that's happening in the country and yeah. so you know, you know i think we just have to be careful about that and i and i also want to make sure that we say you know we don't want to be insensitive to those people who have lost their lives you know it, those Absolutely. the amhara people the aroma people the tigray people like all of the ethiopians who have lost their life over um the past few years like we we sincerely you know extend our deepest condolences for that because 
you know, it's, somebody's life is not a game and what's going on or what had been going on um, was serious. Yeah. You know? I think really what has to happen is in Ethiopia, you know, I'm, I'm just speaking this from my heart, is that um, as Ethiopian or as, or as a black person, we have to really see each other as brothers and sisters. Yeah. We have to stop this division took place um, in Ethiopia. We were more than like 80 nation nationalities, little ones, right? There's, there's Amhara, there's the big ones, Oromo, there's you know Tigray and the Somali and the Afar and the southern part. There are a lot of, everybody want their own group. Mm -hmm. Everybody want group thinking, you know? Everybody want to think their own way. They want to do their own thing. It's okay to do those things. But when I meet one of my um, Amhara brother or my Tigray brother, that that person is my brother. Yeah. That is my sister, you know? When I, I should be really, be with that person, I should be making a good relationship, you know? And, and listen to the ideas. And if they have opportunities, if they, have, if they wanna do more in Ethiopia, if they wanna bring more resources, expertise, I should be really working with those people and changing the country, yes. you know? Because of this government is from a certain group, so I don't like Ethiopia, I hate how Ethiopia is. I don't even care what is happening in Ethiopia. Even if something good is happening, I don't care because this government sucks. Right. You know? That's a but bad attitude. That is right? really, it really is. Because we, we have to celebrate, you know, the win, yeah. right? And also we have to work on the things that has to be changed. So if people are want to come and invest in Ethiopia and they want to create jobs and bring the expertise, you know, not only Ethiopians, although that include us, you know, black Americans, mm -hmm. we have to open our arm and accept those are our brothers and sisters as well. Yeah. So I think seeing it, the person for who he is, for who she is, um, uh, you know, as we're all created by God's image. So we have to see from that perspective, yeah. not identity politics. Right. And, you know, my husband brings up a really good point that I also wanted to address because, you know, every once in a while we'll get trolls on the channel. And, you know, um, one person in particular was, you know, very rude. And, you know, was saying, I, I can tell that he was, he's frustrated about the state of his country and about the government and those things. And I understand that, but he took his frustration out on me and, um, and was saying, you know, go back to America and shut up. And so even though I understand where his anger might be coming from, it highlighted a bigger picture for me as my husband was mentioning is that, you know, we don't see each other as one, you know, that Ethiopian was looking at me as a foreigner. You know, and so I think that Africa as a whole has to start recognizing Black Americans as part of the diaspora. You know, we are part of the diaspora. Ethiopia, Africa is our home. You know, um, just like Ethiopia, we are a diverse people. Black Americans are diverse. Ethiopians are diverse. There, are, there are people in Ethiopia, in um, in the Beni Shango Gemuz. Um, and Gambella regions that look very much Sudanese, you know, that probably have closer um, like blood ties and DNA to the Sudanese people. There are people in the southern regions who look very much Kenyan or Ugandan or, you know, like it's a diverse people. Yeah. And so these lines, these borders between countries were, were drawn by our European colonizers, you know, even though mm. Ethiopia wasn't colonized, the whole continent was affected by this, you know? And so, because they wanted to divide up their, our riches amongst themselves, they drew boundary lines, you know? So now we're saying this group is Ethiopia, this group is this, this group is that, you know, when really we, we are one people, you know? And there are yeah. different tribes and cultures and languages that are, you know, all beautiful and existing on the continent. But I think, you know, when it comes to black Americans, people like to say, oh, they're only West African or they're only this or only that. No, we're a very diverse group as well. You know, like we didn't all just originate from West Africa. And you can see that in our features, the way we look. We don't look um, only West African or only East African. Some of us look more West African. Some of us look more East African. Some of us look more Southern African. Some of us, you can't even tell because like there will be people, you know, um, African immigrants in the U.S. 
who may try and speak their language to you because they think you look like them. Right. Or, you know, they may be afraid to say something, even to my husband, even who looks very Ethiopian. <laughs> like They think sometimes I'm Mexican. Exactly. You know, they say, hola, you know, right. I don't speak, you know. Somebody but thought he was Indian I'm before. I'm Colombian, like, yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. Know? I mean, like, yeah. I don't think we can, we can just say these black Americans are, you know, not yeah. part of us. Yeah. Like, no. We are, we should be united as a continent. And yeah. that doesn't mean that we have to abandon our cultures yeah. and our languages. Yeah. Like, no, like I said, all of that is beautiful. But I think, you know, um, certain countries like Ghana, Senegal, um, recently Kenya, Sierra Leone have opened up their arms and their doors to the black American diaspora who want to come home mm, and have made a pathway, you know, for us to be able to come home and get residency yeah. and get citizenship. Um, but I think Ethiopia and other African countries still look at us as foreigners and still treat us like foreigners. Um, and so I think that that's something that has to change because if it had not been for the sacrifice of black Americans in America, and I even want to extend to the Caribbean, um, you know, if it had not been for our sacrifice in the West, the people who are trying to immigrate from Africa to America would not be able to, yeah, you know, if, if it wasn't for the civil rights movement and the struggles of black American people, you would not be able to come to America as an African immigrant and, mm -hmm. and get a job and make an income or send your children to the same schools as white people or live in the same communities as white people. Like, you know, and I think that for whatever reason, people, gloss over you know our sacrifice and just say like they don't deserve this or that or the other but then it's okay for for other people to go to the u.s and you know get the opportunity yeah, absolutely know? i think black americans are the backbone of the u.s economy you know i was reading some history about 19 even in, in 1900s and 1950s and 40s you know um, um, black americans um they, 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 they were the ones who worked in all factories in manufacturing and the family values was so high, you know, their income was is really high and they used to live a better life and they worked so hard um, economically and also um, to build this country, even bringing the family values in, in godly loving people, you know, you still see that still today. Black Americans love God and than any, anybody in, in this country, you know, and you see them all the time praising the Lord and, and, and they're just saying, have a blessed day. You don't hear from a white person. I never heard it. Maybe a lot of people, maybe other people, you guys probably heard it. A lot of where I worked at, a lot of black people say, have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. You know, have a blessed day is a big deal now. People don't say that, yeah. you know, because the ties they have with, with God is deeper, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think I would say the same way, the same way they did. You know, building this country, being the backbone of, of the United States. I think giving African Union, African Union should give a, a citizenship, you know, or a green card or permanent card for all black Americans, for those who wish to go back to Africa. It doesn't matter where they want to go to. It can be Ethiopia or Ghana, Nigeria. It doesn't matter, Sierra Leone or wherever they want to. African Union should recognize that and they should give them a permanent residency and to pass the citizenship the same way United States does when we come here and that way they can go back home that is the homeland and they can invest you know they can bring resource they can bring the knowledge right. you know and they can able to work and live and raise their children as well I think that would be amazing yeah the that... same way we, I'm sorry the no, same way we came here the same way we came from Ethiopia from Ghana Nigeria and the same way we came here in the gate green card or citizenship and they should be the same for black Americans because that is their home that's that's where they come from that is, they shouldn't be treated as a second class or as a foreigners right. they should be treated as just one of us because we are one that's a I very good that. point yeah that's a very good point and you know I think it reminds me of a comment that somebody made where they were saying you know, I think there's some misunderstanding between the Africans like on the continent and then the the African diaspora, you know, living abroad in America, the Caribbean or Europe. And um, and I think the confusion is like 
there may be some maybe jealousy on the part of Africans who are saying, well, they have everything, you know, they got an upper hand because they were able to be born in America and, you know, make money abroad and they have this, they have that. But I think instead of looking at us that way, um, see us see us as the opportunity you know like these people these black americans or european um, blacks or caribbeans they're going to come home and they're going to create opportunities for us yes. you know we want to bring jobs we want to bring resources like we're not coming to to take you know most of us are coming to give and create opportunities and help build wealth on the continent so that you don't have to leave you don't have to go to america or Europe or somewhere in order to generate wealth. You know, we can do it right there on, on African soil. And um, I think if, if we start seeing each other that way as like, you know, family, a partnership, like yeah. let's grow together, then we will achieve great things, you know? Um, my husband and I are, are working on a project right now. It's, you know, in the very early stages, but our desire is, is to be able to assist, you know, with specifically people returning to Ethiopia. You know, that's the country we yeah. know, that's the country we're familiar with. So if you're planning to go somewhere else, like we won't be able to help you, but you know, we're very passionate about this and it may take time. We're working towards it right now, getting, you know, putting our ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think we will achieve something great. And um, we hope that you all will support us and continue yeah. to watch the channel and pray with us, you know, um, because I think this is the time now where the Most High is bringing the children back home, you know? Um, and so for those of you who understand what I'm saying, you get it. And those, for those of you who don't, maybe it's not for you or the most high will reveal it to you in time. But, you know, just know that we are trying to bring two parties of the same house back together, you know, um, doing the work of the father, building the bridges, you know, and, and trying to restore that that trust. I think both Black Americans and Africans have kind of lost a little bit of our identity along the way. Um, and so we're, we're rediscovering yeah. ourselves, you know, as a people. And so we just hope that you will join with us and you will partner with us and pray for us as we embark on this journey to help bring all of the diaspora who are interested back home to Ethiopia. Yeah, I think that's right. I think I I'll say that just let's, let's try to um, celebrate the win, you know, let's encourage each other, um, not tearing each other apart, but, you know, um, encouraging each other. I think what, if we do that, um, I, I'm just talking as Ethiopian, um, those who are listening to us right now, let's celebrate the win. There is, there's issues. So these issues, we, me, you, and others will come together. If I do my part and if the other 10 people do their part, that is how we're gonna solve the problem, yeah. you know. So let's let's go that journey, and um, we'll 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 be successful. Yeah, and, and be the change we want to be. Yes, right? yes. we want to see. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I don't have anything yeah. else. Do you have something to say? I, I think I think that's subscribe, please. Yes. And keep watching the video. <laughs> please. And thank do. you guys so much. Thank you yeah. guys. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye. Take care.